everybody, it's Renee from Tailspin Farm and I am hopping on today um, to do a tutorial on dyeing yarn. Um, I don't dye yarn all the time. Um, that I have a long list of things that I do, long list of things that I would like to learn yet, and I've done quite a bit of dyeing, but not, I'm not even close to being good at it. Um, but I do have some yarn plans for this year and they include dyeing some of my Angora. And so that's what we're going to do today. Um, we are down in our basement kitchen with our vintage um, Westinghouse oven. Uh, I swear these, I haven't checked the dates on these. Um, we also have a Westinghouse refrigerator and I'm pretty sure that they're as old as I am, if not older. Um, and they work better than my new appliances upstairs. So we'll say that and we will move on. Um, I have, uh, I'm going to do one color today, but I'm going to dye, um, a skein of yarn and some fiber. Um, we're going to try it all at the same time. I will give you hints and tips on how to do that and why you might not want to do that. We're going to do one color. Um, I use... I use a lot of different dyes. I started out using the Wilton cake dyes that you can get at craft stores. Um, and actually those do a great job. I think, um, you can do Kool-Aid dyes if you want to do it with your kids, which maybe I'll, I will do a tutorial on Kool-Aid dyes. If anybody would like that, put a comment below for me. Um, maybe that would be a good homeschool project with your kids, but I have kind of stuck with, um, the Jacquard acid dyes, um, these are the easiest to use and they're pretty user friendly, I think. Now, again, I am not, this isn't my main goal in my fiber business. Um, I look at some people's dyed fiber and yarns and go, how do they get that so beautiful? Some of that just is so shiny and so beautiful. Um, and I need to do some more studying because I would like to do some more dyeing with my yarn. I make a lot of um, jewelry out of my fiber, my yarn, my Angora yarn. And last fall in summer, I did uh, quite a bit of dyeing with that and made some jewelry sets that turned out really beautiful. So I'd like to jump into that a little bit more. That's one of my goals for the year. And um, so I need to get better at dyeing and more comfortable with it. Um, I am going to put, <laughs> I am let me just say this. I am not a um, technical brain person. I am very much creative. So even when I cook or bake, I am throwing stuff in. I am not a good measure. And sometimes with this, you have to be. Um, and also, you need to be good at taking notes if you want to be able to repeat what you're doing. So that's another goal on my list this year is to keep track and records of um, dyed yarns, projects I'm making. I have a book now. I'm putting all of my starts and finishes in there. Um, so at the end of 2023, I will be able to go in December and look back and see all the projects that I worked on this year, um, at least with my yarn and my fiber business. So um, let's get started. Uh, this is just, again, a basic tutorial. So again, I have jacquard dyes. Um, I get these at fiber festivals, fiber shows. You can also buy them on Amazon. Um, and there are quite a few, if you just type in, these are acid dyes. If you just type in um, fabric acid dye or, yeah, acid dyes, you will get these. You'll be able to order them. There's um, yarn shops and yarn sh stores and spinning stores online that sell these also. So you can find these easily. Again, Amazon probably is the quickest way to get these. I'll try to remember to put a link below for Amazon where I get these. Um... You also need some tools specifically designated for your dyeing. So you're not going to use these in your kitchen anymore. Um, and I should have gloves, which I don't. Uh, and usually I do wear gloves. I do not wear masks. Um, I know some people do. I am always very careful with the powder when I use it. And I'm not doing this on a regular basis. If I were doing this on a regular basis... I would probably have the full year. I do have an apron because I don't want it on my clothes. Um, this is a dye. It will stain. And countertops, um, 
these seem to be pretty res resilient. Again, these countertops are probably as old as I am. They're just a laminate. But if you wipe it off very quickly, um, the magic erasers work really well to clean that up too. So um, might want to have that on hand. Pot, a measuring cup, measuring spoon, um, and some vinegar. I use vinegar with mine. And your dye. And then today I'm going to be dyeing. Um, I have an idea for um, a jewelry set that I want to make. And so I have a small skein of my Anguar yarn. And this is, I don't know what weight this would be, probably a DK weight. It's pretty thin spun. Um, again, I spin my Angora. Um, sometimes I spin it thicker than what people would normally spin it. And I'm okay with that. Again, I don't like to always follow the rules or what other people say is right or wrong in my fiber business. So um, this is pretty thin spun for me. And so I've got one skein of this. Um, this is 65 yards. This is 1.03 ounces. So about an ounce, which is a good um, measure for how much um, yarn you get from an ounce of Angora fiber. So there's that. And I also have some combed and clipped. Um, it's not quite the same color, but it's close. And this is 100% Angora off my bunnies. So we're going to use that. I, I'm going to say this now because I'm probably going to regret it later. Again, we will see. Um, I'm going to try dyeing these both in the same pot at the same time. I want kind of the same color. Um, another option is to pick one, put it in, and then either use the leftover dye for the other one. Like if you put the skein in first, pull it out once it's done, and then put the, um, put the fiber in and pick up the rest of the dye. You could do it that way. Um, so there are different ways you can refresh because once you suck the dye out with one thing, it's going to be either gone or there'll be um, enough left just to give it the same tones. So um, we're going to do that this morning. And yeah, so let me pause this. I'm going to fill my pot with water. Um, I'm going to, this is, I don't know what quartz, how many quartz this is. I'm not sure. I've had this for years, um, but it's like a stock pot. I just got it at Walmart. Um, so I'm going to fill it probably three quarters of the way. You want enough water to be able to saturate your fiber and your yarn or whatever you're doing. Um, you want it enough to saturate and not have be able to get it down into the water. So let me pause this and I'll be right back. Okay, I have the water on. I have it on high. Um, I'm going to get that um, going here and I'm going to add my stuff. I... I'm going to take back what I just said. I decided not to dye both of these at the same time. Um, I'm going to do the fiber first and then we'll do the yarn. I feel like um, with this that I'm going to end up with a mess if I do that because I'm going to have fiber, fiber stuck in my yarn. So I'm not going to do that today. I may try out that theory and then I'll let you know how it goes. But for today, I'm going to start with the yarn um, and hopefully... I will move you up here in just a second, but I'm going to start, um, I have a half a teaspoon, and this is a sapphire blue. I wanted more of a navy blue, and I don't have that dye. Um, so I'm going to start with probably a quarter teaspoon of the dye, and I'm going to put it in and give it a stir. here. I'm going to try to keep this area cleaned up as best I can. So then I'll have less cleanup. So this is um, uh, about a quarter teaspoon. Oh, I got some floating. So it's it's pretty strong in its coloring. And I've got it all stirred in. So I'm going to just pour this in and let it heat up. Now the trick with um, fiber is you don't want to felt it. And I have an old video, probably five years old on this channel. If you go back, 
you will see where I felted some Angora fiber. Um, actually, it wasn't the Angora that I felted. I think it was alpaca that I felted. And it was because in this process of doing this, I added it um, to hot water. And I can't remember what else I did, but it just it felted the fiber really bad. So I'm going to add it while it's cold or cool. And I'm just going to take a handful of my basket of fiber. And I'm going to guess that this is probably right around an ounce. Um, I didn't bring my scale down. So if you want specifics, and again, I should have my notebook down here. I should be writing down what I'm doing. As soon as I finish here, I will go do that. But I'm guessing that this is about an ounce of Angora fiber. And I am going to, and remember, Angora is um, not water resistant, but it is somewhat water repellent. So you really have to work. It bounces back up out of this water. Um, you have to work to get this saturated. So you just want to push. There's some hay I'm going to pull out. So you just want to work at pushing this down until it is all saturated. And I'm going to pause it here. I'm going to bring you over um, without the light. Hopefully that'll work okay. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so you, as you can see, this really is water resistant, water repellent to some degree, which is kind of one of the cool um, aspects of Angora, why it's so warm. And you can see there are a few bits and bobs of short pieces. I will pull those out when I'm carding this. And actually, this is going to be perfect for the color that I want, at least for the fiber. I'm going to blend this with some other things. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure that it's all separate and that it's all saturated. And remember, I remember I said that um, you want to make sure you have enough water in your pot to do that. So there we go. I think we've got most of this saturated. And as it heats up, um, I'll continue to stir this and um, separate out. See, this whole piece right here is not wet yet at all. It's it, So I'm gonna pull it apart and work on getting it there. And you can kind of see it get wet and go away. So I'm gonna work on that and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I've got this heating up as you can see and you want to add um, just white vinegar and I just pour it in. Um, this is what's gonna help it to grab your, I see a piece of hay right there. Let's see if I can get that. And you can still see, um, I have, in, again, most fibers, um, not most fibers, some fibers aren't gonna do this, but the Angora is water resistant and it wants to kind of not grab. So I'm gonna separate out there. So as you separate out the fibers, it starts grabbing the color. Um, so the vinegar gets this started. I added probably a cup right there, maybe a little bit less. And as I watch this, what you're looking for is all of the, um, the color to be absorbed into your yarn. So essentially when we're done with this, this water will be clear again. And the vinegar helps your fiber pick that up. So we're gonna let this sit and I'll kind of watch it and add more, um, more vinegar as needed. And we'll be back. Okay guys, I am back and I'm just getting ready to pull this out. These are great. I just get these at like the uh, um, houseware place uh, or houseware aisle at Meyer or whatever um, grocery store. And these, I've been kind of sitting here just flicking through. And as you can see, hopefully through the steam, what was blotchy white is now a beautiful blue all the way through. I've gotten all the, the fibers saturated. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but the water is pretty much clear. Um, let's see. Can you, I know the steam is hard. 
If you can see the, the water dripping, it is not a blue dye. And actually, if I, when I go like this, if you're looking over here, you could see the pot. So, um, I'm getting ready to pull this out. And you also want a colander or strainer or whatever you call it um, next to you or in the sink that you can pour this. Um, the dye has been all saturated, so you don't need to worry about that. And I'm just going to move it into here, and then we're going to start our yarn. Okay, um, most of my fiber is out. I can see just a couple of pieces here on the top of the water that I can see you probably can't, but it looks great. Um, there's no blue dye running out, so that's good. I am going to add... We're going to move on to our yarn. I'm going to add another glub of, I don't know what you'd call that, a, a pour of vinegar. And I'm going to just take, again, a small amount, probably um, a quarter teaspoon. And I'm actually this time going to sprinkle it on the top and then give it a good stir. So that has refreshed the color. That's about the same amount that I put in for the fiber. And I have my yarn here. Remember this was about an ounce. I have two ties. You can see one here by my thumb, here by my finger. They are um, just tied lightly. You're gonna wanna watch those because you don't want any lines in your, in your coloring. So I'm gonna kinda move those around as I do this, but essentially I'm just gonna drop it in and do the same thing I did with the fiber. Um, clean those off and just start dipping it in and getting it saturated. Um, the yarn will do the same thing, only not as much because it's already been spun and it's gonna grab color pretty quick, as you can tell. So this won't take long and the water was hot um, and hopefully that won't, again, when you felt things, it's usually s switching from hot to cold, cold to hot, things like that, um, and a lot of motion along with it, either agitation or whatever. Um, and so I'm not going to agitate this too much. I'm just going to let it soak in here for a little bit. And then um, we will have our dyed blue yarn. And like I said, you can already tell that this grabbed pretty quickly. Um, and there's the, you could see the dye still in the yarn or in the water, but it's actually not a ton. So we're gonna let this sit and soak for just a little bit here, and I'll be right back. And while I'm letting my um, yarn get dyed, remember this color of fiber was a mix of, there is some, you could see some chestnut in here, and this bunny, um, I have two of these bunnies, the same color, and these are guard hairs um, just a little bit you could see the color um, so that colors in here and then there's some gray and then some more light chestnut you can see and so when you dye that depending on what color you dye with this being so dark blue you don't really I'm trying to get the shadow off my phone there you can see um, a few of the variances in the color just a touch but this is mainly, especially once I card it, um, this is all gonna be pretty consistent. And what I'm doing right here is just pressing the water out. I'm gonna take this out with a towel, and when I take the yarn out, I'll show you how I'm gonna dry it all. Okay, I am, I've turned off my heat, and this is pretty saturated and pretty beautiful. The water is clear, so I'm going to pull it, and I'm going to just put it next to here, and make sure I got, there's one, a couple of strands of fiber still in there, so I'll pull those out real quick, but that's it, guys. Um, I am actually, whoops, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to hold on and move stuff. Um, let me flip you around real quick. Okay. Um, that's all I did. 
uh, it's finished and we have an unusual sunny day out today in Michigan. Um, my sister sent me a weather report and I'm not sure when this was. It, it may have been very recent, but since December 4th, we have had 0.1% of sunshine. That's why we're all crazy here. Um, so it is sunny out, but it is very cold. I am going to, um, I think I'm going to put this outside and I'll show you how I do that. Probably just do, I'm going to end this video. I'll do a picture of how I set it outside. We also have a um, propane fireplace that I can put it in front of if the sun doesn't dry it today. So I am going to sign off here. I'll add the picture at the end of my yarn drying. Um, I apologize for the ring light. I need it, but I don't need the glare off my glasses. That's kind of annoying. Um, but I am glad you were here. I hope you're enjoying all these videos. If there's anything you would like to see me do, um, just put the comment down below in the comment box. And if you don't already subscribe to my channel, please do so. I am trying to grow this channel. I am trying to do um, videos at least one a week right now, if not more. I think this will be my third video this week. Um, I am not good at scheduling videos out, but I am finding out that if I am doing something and pick up the camera or pick up my phone, I am really good at getting videos done. So that's what I'm going to try to do this year. Again, 2023 for me is all about goals and um, growing and achieving a lot that I want to achieve this year. So um, thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed this and have a great Saturday. I hope you're creating something. Bye.